So scope in JavaScript can be clearly understood. If you can understand the history of scope and how scope came to be what it is today, but I'm assuming many people have no idea what scope even is. So let me give you a brief explanation. Scope in programming can be denoted by the curly braces. The curly braces, although unassuming and they seem like they're not important, actually control scope. And each individual scope that you have is its own little world in the world of programming. So let me give you a very brief example of function scope. Function scope is unique to JavaScript. So whenever you declare a value within a function, what's going to happen is that it's not going to be accessible outside the curly braces of the function. So if you declare a value within a function and you try to access it outside like this, it is not going to work. It is going to say it is undefined. But if I move this console log within the function, this is a green, you are good to go this value will be found because it is within the world of the scope. Function scope actually has lots of limitations and it is strange that JavaScript first created function scope and then moved over to what is called block scope. But before we actually talk about block scope, it's good that we get a couple practice rounds in a function scope. Otherwise you probably won't really understand it. So we'll just say, just give this a name, a function scope, doesn't really even matter at all. And we're going to go var and we will declare this a value and we will assign it a value of value just like this. Then let's go down here and let's try to console log it. And as you can see right off the bat, we can't log it at all because it is not available to us. And even VS code can now detect different types of scopes. So if you're seeing a value like this and it's not being able to be accessible because it's gray it's probably out of scope and when we try to actually console log it watch what happens but if i put this console log within the actual function scope and then i go in here and add it just like this it is available it is actually console logable and notice we even have a var right here. So var back in the day wasn't available outside the function as well too and if you don't understand a lot about var let's talk a little bit about block scope. So JavaScript recognized that this was kind of a bad way to implement things. This function scope didn't really work as it intended and using var with function scope really threw a wrench in a lot of things because when it came down to things like if statements, for loops, uh, if statements and for loops still have actual brackets and it made it so that only the functions could correctly scope things. So what happened was they invented let and const to actually implement block scope. So if I have a var in here, this var will still be globally accessible and that's not something that we want. And it will only be correctly scoped when it's in a function. So what the creators of JavaScript actually did was they created let and const. And let and const are going to make it so that there are actually scope rules when it comes to things like if else statements and for loops. So when we actually have a let statement, the correct rules of scope are going to apply and this value is only going to be accessible within these curly braces. But when we have the actual var, when we have the old school var going on, what's going to happen is that this variable is going to be available everywhere within your programming. That's a no-no. That is something that you definitely do not want because it's globally scoped and it will actually pollute the global variable scope. And it means that you will have just variables floating all over your program and there will be no way to contain your variables and they can conflict with each other. So let's go into VS Code and let's actually practice this a little bit and let's see this in action. So I'm going to go into here and I'm going to declare this as true and I'm going to set a var value of, let's say value. I'm just going to call it value. Doesn't, it doesn't really even matter what you call it. It's just kind of to show a point. So when I go into here and I actually log this value, what happens? And as you can see, it is not grayed out. It is available. It is actually accessible within the global scope, which is something that we don't want. So what we do is we have this let thing and let is going to make it so that it's correctly scoped and we actually have scoping within our if else and for loops, which is what you see in programming languages like Java and C sharp. What I think happened, and I have no way to actually verify this, is JavaScript created function scope first, and then they realized programming languages like Java, C sharp, Node, 
had more correct scope. But there's actually one last scope that we need to talk about, and that is going to be lexical scoping. Lexical scoping has more to do with the nesting of functions. So let's take a look at this function right here. We have an outer and then we have an inner function. The outer function kind of makes sense. It's the outer function, but within the outer function, we actually have an inner function. And this inner function has values that are stored within it. If I can give you a quick way to memorize this or a mnemonic is that the inner function is Jeff Bezos. The inner function is Jeff Bezos. And what do I mean by that? <laughs> Jeff Bezos is a billionaire. Jeff Bezos can access me or you at any time. If Jeff Bezos picked up the phone and said, hey, you know, Teddy, do you want to hang out right now? I'm going to hang out with Jeff Bezos. Jeff Bezos is accessible. He can access anybody because he's powerful. He's a part of the inner circle. He's a billionaire. But if I wanted to call up Jeff Bezos, I'm on the outside. That probably could not happen because I'm a regular person. The inner circle, the inner powerful billionaires, quote unquote, and this has nothing to do with programming, can access the outer people. So let's just say here, we want to log the inner value. We want to log the inner value of the inner function. We want to log Jeff Bezos. This would not actually be able to work because once again, you can't access the inner values because they will not let you. But if Jeff Bezos wants to access the outer value, that is perfectly okay in the world of lexical scoping. And that is the whole entire idea behind how a lot of these nested functions that you're going to see work in JavaScript. But let's actually test it out in the terminal and let's take a look and see how this thing actually works. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go into here, I'm going to create an outer function then I'm going to create a outer value and I'm just going to call this outer value. It really doesn't matter what you call it. It's just kind of there for example's sake. I'm gonna leave a space for the console log and then I'm going to have a inner function. So I'm gonna go inner function. So inner, I'm just gonna call this inner. Um, then I'm gonna go let and I'm going to call this inner value. And then I'm going to give this an inner value right here. So let's just give the example. Oh, also I need to have an inner. So I need to uh, call my inner right here. And then I actually need to call the outer if we're going to console log it. Okay, so let's go into here and let's try to log the inner value. So I'm gonna say inner value, just like this. So I go inner value, and then I'm going to go up here and then I am going to log the outer value. So I go console.log the outer value. And as you can see, VS Code is telling us that we cannot log the inner value. The inner value is not being accessible up here. And when we try to log the outer value, it is actually working. Because remember, Jeff Bezos, very powerful. Inner function is very powerful. We can actually log the outside, but we cannot log the inside because we are trying to get to Jeff Bezos. Jeff Bezos doesn't want to talk to us. But Jeff Bezos, the inner powerful function, can access us, access people whenever he wants to because he's powerful, he's a billionaire, and he's cool like that. But that is the video for Scope. That's pretty much all you need to know about Scope in order to get started in JavaScript and become a software developer. If you guys enjoyed this, make sure to hit that like button, make sure to hit that subscribe button, and as always, thank you for watching.